this is the last video that I'm going to make to celebrate the gift of the Piscor, the things that uh, Ed helped me put into the world um, and my friends. And I wanted to do that by sort of turning back the clock to the very first things that the CKRS fan community did, which was the H% C anthology that ran for three issues and steadily improved from issue to issue. Uh, we'll put this together. And it was really, uh, it was, it was really a great thing. It was a labor of love. It was a, it was a comics are for everyone sort of thing. And it, it pains me to see the community painted as uh, comics bros for whatever reason. <laughs> men of a certain age, I suppose. And it pains me to see our community become a footnote in the culture war due to the false narratives that were created for no other reason than the people that made them needed to spread narratives and that was what was happening in the news so it fit conveniently into certain narratives, which is absurd. It went out of his way to never be political uh, in public. That, that he he understood how to market himself in, in that way and others, at least friends. Okay. So these are the things that, um, Ed gave us. This is the first issue. We probably did this. I don't know, a few, not shortly after we started. Uh, it's very funny. It has this like very like Gen X humor design zine approach from a hawk and it actually opens with a story uh for me of uh it's four pages of dream comics and these are some of the first comics i drew on uh on my on my uh, what's it called an impropriate <laughs> um, i think i was using a brush called turpentine the, this entire thing is drawn with the turpentine brush and there are some really interesting effects i think ooh, this one is a good panel i think somewhere in here i was like really starting to cook like, you know, uh, week four with the, with the, uh, iPad, that's what it's called. Uh, I haven't, I haven't drawn digitally in like, like three months. Um, I was, uh, yeah. So I had, I had accidentally sort of nudged the gallery button without saving something or I did, I had undone something and then gone back to gallery and lost a bunch of work for the first time. And boy, did it drive me crazy. But I think this comic came out pretty well. And, um, Oh, look at this. This is probably the best self-portrait I've ever uh, I've ever drawn or, or done as a panel. There you go. Pat yourself on the back. But this isn't why I want to talk about I don't want to talk about this because it just because Will printed me next to like my my, uh, my very, very good friend Eli right here. It's not just because we were here it is. This is a comic by a cartoonist who I supported in a social service agency day have. I supported this person to make and print uh, and exhibit and to freelance and, and to sell their comics. And um, it was a fantastic way. I'm sure if you know my work, I'm sure that somewhere in here you can see where my hand sort of uh, begins and ends with certain tools. Um, there might be other work by this person. You'll be able to see the contrast, but certainly if you know my work, you can sort of see my me coming in with the graphite uh, in certain places here and there. So I was supporting, uh, you know, disabled cartoonists. And I'm not saying this, you know, we don't do this to, we didn't do this ever to pat ourselves on the back, but this only happened because of Ed. So, so cartoonists like this one, who I worked with for many years, this was the first time, and that, and, and this one, the first time they were ever published. Um, and that's a very powerful thing. And look, they're good. She's like, this is very, like, this is like solid. It's better than I can do, you know, so all that. So that was the first issue. And uh, the second issue was a uh, a step up. It's got more of a color. Newsprint, very nice. Let's see what we, see what we got in here. It's kind of, it, it had a Ghost Rider and Spider-Man. It really leaned into like outlaw, you know, this like outlaw bootleg thing that Ed made super popular not completely my thing. There's tons of outlet, out, uh, there's an outlet. There's tons of like bootleg type projects I would love to continue to do for the rest of my life, but I'm not like, I just, I don't, 
the Marvel characters, like, leave, leave the corporate stuff. So I, I want to see weird stuff. This is one of my, one of the cartoonists I supported, the one that we just saw. You can see the design is getting better. But this is more real newsprint. This is J. Andrew World. This is, uh, he had an interesting approach. It's a, it's a not ineffective photo approach. It's a little too esoteric for me to remember what exactly, who, I, I think I'm supposed to know who this is. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But any, anyhow, so that's what, that's what was going on here. Oh, you get eight pages of this. Not bad. Look at this. Nice static thing of the phone with the cast shadow. Very nice. So if, if he is, if, if this guy, if this fellow uh, yeah, is working off of, you know, sometimes his work off of photos is much more effective uh, than others. I don't mind any of it. I, I, I always thought it looked kind of cool. I think, I think you'd be pushed a little bit further to sort of get, you know, like to get away from some of these like more filtery ones. Here's Cosmic Lion before, before all the hubbub bub. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is uh oh fuck why I forgot about this. Yes, yeah, so uh, my comic book, Oh Fuck Why, the only place you can find it is in, this, <laughs> is in this anthology. I completely forgot this was in here. And this is a black and white version. There's a color version that we'll see print, supposedly, one day, colored by, by uh, uh, Morgan Hickman. Morgan Hickman uh, is a phenomenal colorist. Uh, Bona feeds at uh, Dynamite, Deja Thoris, uh, all this stuff. I think he's got a Grendel credit somewhere or other uh tons of indie stuff retailer knowledgeable wonderful fellow this was this is the black and white version i was really proud of this page this page is based on my is direct i wrote this it's directly based on my experience uh as a canvasser with uh you know, certain parties i could name uh, i think he, he gave us 16 pages across two issues. It's beautiful satiny newsprint. It looks really good. I I feel like I completely forgot that these were in here. Ah, look at this. This is one of my guys. Anton. Anton just re reached out to me. Anton has a like an eight-page comic in the next issue. He this this polymath, look out for Anton Spivak. This polymath does it all. Alright, so this these are his uh 21st century musical titles. The deadpan the breath of, uh, let me see if I can change my, get a little brighter here. Uh, the breath of, uh, of culture that Anton Spivak uh, could, could rap on was, uh, was something else. He just reached out to me. Ah, oh, look at this. So, so check this out. Big shot cartoonist Tony McMillan, uh, big, uh, Big Shot mainstream cartoonist Tony McMillan, side by side with uh, a gentleman who's doing fine work getting printed for the very first time. This was the vibe. This was the vibe that CKRS cultivated. I, I, I think that's really the most important part. And the, the other thing that I learned about all, all this collaboration was that the beautiful thing about collaboration, no matter what the context is, is that sometimes uh, you're lifting people up through your collaboration and sometimes they're lifting you up. And it's that exchange of energy that makes the being present in the moment of the process so vital, which is what makes it the best part of comics, for me at least. I don't know who did this story. They pull their skin off and they're like, yeah, look at this. Love you to death. Yes. <laughs> the guy, now, they don't pull the skin off. They re the skeleton reaches out of its own mouth. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. I love it. This, oh my God, I forgot this was here. This is, this, <laughs> oh my God. I have another comic that I made with this character, oh, with this character, <laughs> with this person uh, who, uh, it was, he interpreted uh, the Weird Sisters, Double, Double, Toil and Trouble. When shall we three meet again? I of Newton, Toad of Frog, uh, Wing of Bat and Tongue of Dog, all that stuff. And we did it as like uh, two nine panel it was wonderful um yeah uh you know uh not supposed to show this work I can't, it doesn't really no they're released it's published you can show it it's great these people are brilliant these all rhyme these are so this is the halloween the halloween party spell going to school will make you smarty now give you a halloween party spells boo 
So it was always, the structure is always the same. The first panel tells you <laughs> the name of the spell. The second panel is the actual, you know, Gifford's bars for days. And then the third panel is the spells, the, the effect, that's how he would say. And then uh, the, 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 the cause and the effect, right? The end, the last one, the lights go out spell. We know friends have each other's back. Make the final panel black. Spells, click, the end. Ha! What a guy. Okay, let's see what else is in here. So this person uh, it was, it was published for the first time doing doing this work. And I feel like when people would see it, they people didn't have... People aren't good enough at reading pictures to look at this work and realize that it's done by adults with disabilities. And when you realize that ha that ha this entire book is is those people sitting next to multi published uh, you know King of the World Tony McMillan and all these other guys doing fantastic comics, it's like it's a very powerful thing. Look at this! Oh my God, this is my best friend. This is Kevin and me talking about Captain and the game the game master. See, we'll do a little bit of dialogue here. Hey, I'll, I'll read the whole thing. F it. It's my show. I'll do what I want. Hey, Ben, do you remember the 90s cartoon Captain N, the Game Master? Come on, Kevin. Do I remember it? I lived it. You love that show, don't you? Yeah, it's all right. It's one of the best crossover cartoon shows of all time. Crossover? Crossovers are when different franchises get mashed together Captain N is a crossover between all the different Nintendo characters in one show. There's Kid Icarus, that's Pit, uh, and Mother Brain from Kid Icarus, and Metroid. You never played those games before. Well, not as a kid. And then you got uh, you got to mix in Simon Belmont from Castlevania and Mega Man. See, one's from Konami, the other's from uh, from from Capcom. A crossover. <laughs> Start at the beginning. What's the show about anyways? Okay, so there's this guy, Kevin. Yeah, not you, though. Yeah, no, not me. I'm Kevin Kamano. He's some other teenager. He's some California teenager. He's Captain N. He's playing video games with his dog and his mom nags. Kevin, I thought I told you to clean up your room. Then Kevin, again, Captain N, not me, gets sucked into the TV and says, Whoa! Just like a gnarly surfer bro from the early 1990s. And that's how Kevin became Captain N, and the N team saves Video Land. And you can't forget about Princess Lana. No, you cannot. Ben, do you have a crush on this female video game character? Take a beat. Answer the question. Yes, I do. This was with Kevin Kamano. 2019. Wow, this is this is like one of my favorite comics, and it, this is all real. This is all the real relationship I had with this fellow. Okay, terrific. There's more Tony McMillan, back issue bin with Eli Schwab. So it's like all my friends, plus the guys I supported. Look at this, The Good Kid by Anton Spivak. Nice use of screen tone. This is, I did this at the time uh, on this and some inking and some lettering assists and all this stuff. This is Anton's comic. Just natural. Like he, he knew uh, Mad Magazine, you know? So we would refer to things that they would do in Mad Magazine and he'd be like, oh, I understand it through that. He wrote this very, very poignant, very, very poignant stuff with the guy, the guy is thinking of autobiographical stuff. Real, this is a fantastic comic. You know, in a, it was crazy. I would go to conventions and I would, ha and I would take these guys and I would take these books and the zines that we would make and people couldn't figure out what we were doing. They would look at us and be like, those people are not going to break into the comic book industry. It's like, bro, that's not what we're trying to do here. But the people that did understand like why we were there and took a moment to actually look at this work were, were impressed. Unfortunately, one of the things that really stung was that I met people who were like advocates in the industry. If I named them, you'd know them. And I tried to show them these people's work or introduce these people to them 
or explain what we were doing with disabled queer people of color and others who were cartoonists that wanted to get a chance to shine. And it was really, it was really hard for anyone to wrap their head around the idea that we were doing this for a reason other than hopefully we'll get the, the attention of an editor or a publisher or, or a journalist. You know what I mean? Like, the, the ulterior motive is to give people the experience of comics community. And it was, it was, for some reason, very hard for many people to wrap their head around that, but not Will Hoffnecht. He understood right away the kind of editorial support that, that was required in this job. Look at this, and Dan Muller. This is before me and Dan Muller became friends. I can't wait to do my video on Dan Muller's stuff. He's so good. All right, so this is the third issue. Great. Okay, I gotta wrap this up. We're um, running along. This is the third issue. I'm not sure what's in here. Since ah, this is again by Anton. You can see me in the back, sort of coming in with the assist. Uh, this is a comic by. Is this is by Casey. Casey Bouchard. Yeah, yeah. Casey Bouchard's very good. A craftsman. I think he's a carpenter as well. Ah, here's my podcast. Always nice to get a little little shine on the podcast with the CLP guys. I I. Uh, Eli, Eli does all the work. A thousand thank yous to Eli. This is someone, this is someone that Will was mentoring and Will had to sort of adjust his expectations and this person had to adjust their expectations from this like very like manhwa-esque uh, like scrolling manga. And so they really, they really had to work hard together to figure out how this was going to work in terms of layout. And I think they were very successful. I think that um, this is a, a pretty good piece of storytelling, but like all like all manga, it's sort of like both tells too much. It's like too broad and not like paced at all. I'm like there's always a demon, like saying, "Oh, my dad's a demon." Blah blah blah. Anyway, I'm sure it's very good. It's very nice work. Look at the, the blurring on this. I, I, I do enjoy that. Eh, do I? Yeah, it's fine. In good measure. What a guy. Look at this. Here's a wrap-up. This is the announcement of the Maple Comics grant. And this is something about a fish. And oh, and here's, here's part two of Oh Fuck Why of my comic. This is one of the most elaborate pages I ever, I ever drew, I think. These are the first all-digital pages. And so I went all digital. Maybe like eight pages into the book, I got the iPad and I was like, fuck it. And then we wrap up the book. Wow, cool. So I completely forgot that my work. So basically this is all me, my friends, and the people that I was supporting at the time. And uh, the people that I was supporting at the time needed my support and I needed someone else's support to, to give them these opportunities. And that happened because of... Um, because of it so the last thing i'm going to show are these uh these posters the uh indie com indie comics creator con was in march was uh what, six weeks ago Sorry, five weeks ago and uh, seven weeks ago <laughs> something like that and uh, i never thought that i was going to get the opportunity to draw a poster a large oversized poster that would go into print for a convention so cool like I, I i never thought it but um you know because the other another gift of the pisker was matt sardo's monkeys fighting robots and the gift and leadership that matt showed in putting this convention together and you know he thanked ed and jim you know for for that like they they literally made that happen they had there had been rumblings of conventions they had been sort of teasing that idea i'm sure that they probably would have rolled it out in the next i don't know maybe let's call it two or four years who's to say um but you know they whatever me and my friends in the community were doing was some unauthorized shit and so they 
did not acknowledge this convention that they made and inspired. And that's the gift of the Piss War. It's complex, and there's a lot of layers to it. And I think uh, if together we are kinder to each other, more focused on comics, less focused on drama, more focused on craft, history, process, and storytelling, everyone will get more out of comics. And I think that we are all brothers and sisters in comics and that we should act, we should act that way. And I think that, uh, I think that there should be more dialogue that's driven by storytelling and creativity. Uh, because I think that ultimately people are, are that's, that's the thing of real value. That's, that's the nutrition. I can't wait to get into, I'm done, I'm done talking about this now. And I can't wait to talk about other things. And I hope, uh, I hope that if you like what I'm doing, you'll, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. But I'm not doing it. I, I'm not doing it for any ulterior motive other than to celebrate comics, which I hope you'll do with me. And I hope that you'll be there to correct me when I make many public mistakes, which I am apt to do. Semper Comics. That's it.